Hey guys, we're back at Pro Vision Cycling. We're going to chat to Steve Jockey today, aka the Pocky Rocket. If you remember last time we spoke to Ben, today we're going to chat to his dad, Steve, former national champion of the UK. We're going to talk about old kit, we're going to talk about new kit, and we're going to talk about one of his national champion victories as well. So let's go in, meet Steve, and catch up. Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm down here at ProVision again. As I promised you in the last video, I was going to catch up with Steve Jock in here, uh, Manxman, Pocket Rocket, former national champion of the UK as well. So, good to see you Steve. Thanks for your time. You too, Simon. Um, so, we've got one of your, your national champs jerseys here. I know when, you know, if I look over the wall here, for example, we've got, I think, three or four different national champs jerseys. Uh, I think this was your first elite senior jersey, if I remember rightly. That's right, yeah, um, from uh, 1984, which was um, <coughs> it was it was good for me because it was actually um, held and <coughs> organised on the Isle of Man. Oh wow! You know, so it was um, it was a big, a big, a big event for me and a big win for me. So, were you living at the Isle of Man at the time, or were you, were you over? No, I, I was in. Uh, moved over to the UK full time. Then I moved over to the UK full time. Um, well, proper full time in 1983. Uh, I did move off the Isle of Man in 1979 to pursue my career as a as a as a, as a racing cyclist. Oh, fantastic. So, do you want to tell us a bit more about the team, <coughs> the year, the race for this particular national champs? Yeah, so the the, uh, the the event was. Um, I'm sure it was launched around about back end of 1983 that the Isle of Man Cycle Week, Michael Hare and uh, the ma magnificent team and week that we used to have over there uh, was going to promote the uh, the national road title, you know, and the year before it was at Harrogate <coughs> and um, John Herity won that one um, and then obviously I was thinking, you know, it's, it's come to the Isle of Man and it's only my second year as a professional bike rider so um, and I knew that that week for me was a very very special week for me because obviously with a local lad every time that week come round that was that was the pinnacle of my season as a schoolboy junior and, and early doors into my senior career, you know. Um, and it was a, there was an awful lot of self-inflicted pressure that went on to it when, whenever there was a race over there in that particular week, yeah. you know. Um, and yeah, so obviously when that race was was um, was organised and to be run on the the Isle of Man, which went round, um, it was 140 mile. It was one lap of the TT course and then uh, numerous laps of. Um, of the Wilson circuit, which uh, basically went uh, not far from where I used to live, really. So your old, your old stomping ground. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a couple of things I noticed really. I said that Modusel was your, your team at the time. Yeah. I guess this this was the bike, was it? Yeah, that was the very bike. Um, <coughs> uh, Brian Rupp built them for uh, for uh, Modusel. Uh, it was made out of Renault 653 Professional. Um, it was the it was obviously the best bike at the time. Campax Super Record on it. Uh, Mavic Mavic GP open four rims, um, Tubbs, uh, Rolls Turbo saddle, um, Chinelli sixty five bars, Chinelli stem. Um, it was it was the, it was the best you could get at the time. And say top of the range at the yeah, time, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So I mean I've seen a lot of your your old jerseys and kit over the years. You know I think I've, I first met you in '97 when I was working in the local bike shop there. Um, so I guess you you know I mean when did you start racing? I started racing in September 1973. Uh, and this jersey again. So this was uh, you know well into your career at this point. Yeah, yeah. So this already for me, if I look at some of the older jerseys I've seen, yeah. I can see some differences in technology and materials here as well. But do you, do you want to just because I know now you're obviously you know you, you head head up Provision yeah, and yeah. Cycling who make the custom mm -hmm. kit as well. And if you remember, guys, in the last video we looked at our our current race kit. Yeah. So just want to give us a little bit of background on you know on your view and how the the jerseys and the technologies have, have moved on over you know throughout yeah. your career and then beyond. I guess. Yeah, we'll do. Um, I mean, so when I first uh, started, there was like a there was like a cotton mix in cycling jerseys. Obviously, dye sublimation wasn't um, wasn't wasn't around then. So obviously, all this is dye sublimation, all the stuff that the guys are riding with at the moment out there, with any form of branding on them um, or patterning on them. If you turn your jersey inside out, it's it's white on yeah. the inside. So all the jerseys start white, and then the dye sublimation, you know, which is quite a, a technical procedure. Um, but regarding the the fabrics, um, we went from like a cotton 
a cotton based jersey um, back in the 60s it was, it was a wool mix um, when they got wet they got really really heavy they just treble the weight you know <laughs> um, if you had anything in your back pocket it was usually dangling on your back tie you know so um, and then we went into the like a slightly lighter cotton based um, cycling jersey in the in the like sort of mid to late to late 60s early 70s and then um, and then what I know is then we, acrylic start to come out um, and it was it, obviously we were we, because there was nothing else available you got used to riding in it you know but <clears throat> I could never really get anything fit because I was racing 60 59 60 kilos and um, the majority of the jerseys that I had to get you know we get a lot of customers complaining about the size of it the majority of the jersey that I was given, especially if I was handed down a, or handed a classification jersey for leading the stage race, they usually had to tie a knot in the front of it, you know, so we yeah, had to fit it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, and then of course, when we actually got to uh, the the mid to late 80s, the Lycra started coming out then, um, <clears throat> and, and the there was Lycra was, was I remember the first pair of Lycra bib shorts that I bought was um, was the Sante back in 1979, the back end of 79, and that's when the woolen shorts were, were were replaced by this fantastic new fabric that was you know made in Italy, uh, which is Lycra spandex, you know, which um, which is so very very popularly used uh, around the world in all sorts of fabric. So that's what the jerseys were made of. Then the skin suits were made of uh, were full Lycra, but. This jersey now, to be quite honest, um, if we binned off the woolly um, or the acrylic sleeve sleeve ends and um, on the acrylic neck, um, and we just had the lycra sleeves. I have got jerseys downstairs from a, a few from about three or four years after this one was actually uh, on the market, um, where they're not a million miles from the jerseys that we're currently in the pro scene. The the world tour riders are actually riding in now. The lycras are just lighter. Um, but this fitted just the same and it had the same properties realistically as the stuff now I mean, so a lot of them have a lot um, mesh side panels in now for, for breathability so you'd, you'd wear certain jerseys uh, when, it's, when it's a little bit chilly but obviously when they're riding a uh, hilly, hilly stage of the Tour de France, Tour of Italy, Tour of Spain to go for a far lighter fabric with maybe a mesh a mesh side or a mesh back in it now you know with, uh, with a bit of UVA blocking uh, protection in there so re realistically What's actually found now is that the the jerseys that we're actually racing in now, going back from 1984 to the jerseys they're racing in now, they're not a million miles away from one another. So I know you're still riding today as well, and we go out on a weekend as well. Yeah. But but how do you you know what's the sort of process now with investigating new fabrics or designs or, or cuts with the materials that you know your race team and and the kit that you guys do here at Provision as well for the everyday cyclists. Just tell us a bit how about you go through that process. Well, obviously every year at the, towards the back end of the season, we always have um, a lot of uh, communication with our fabric suppliers in Italy, um, and they send us if there's any if there's any new fabrics that are on the market. Because obviously they know a lot an awful lot more before we do. You know, um, so we can actually they send us the the fabrics out there, or we go out there and have uh, variation of uh, meetings with um, with the fabric manufacturers as well as, um, as as our manufacturing plants as well. So we can actually see the finished garments as well. And um, what we usually find, we are pretty much on the ball with the, with the way things things are, are moving in the in the sport, you know. And um, usually find that some, some of the choices that we've actually made for our garments have actually been used by some of the World Pro Tour teams as well. That's been their choice, you know, with the various meshings and the grippers that are actually in the jerseys now. Um, but it's not just for the uh, you obviously with with, uh, with the provision business um, you've got to cater for um, for everybody mm -hmm. so you've also got you know you, you from your racing snake you know the guy who sort of weighs um, you know 60 60 kilos soaking wet you know to, to the guy who's just found the love for the bike again and just come off uh, off a, you know a, a chips and pie diet and being down the pub uh, drinking beer for a number of years you know but he wants to change a lifestyle you know yeah. and uh, you know that's one of the uh, one of the reasons why I ride a bike now you know just purely for health and happiness really you know I don't uh, I have a, I have the occasional dig in but I, I just enjoy just enjoy doing it you know yeah fantastic so we are going to be doing quite a few other videos with uh, with the team at Provision and, and Steve you know I want to spend a bit more time looking at the history of 
of your cycling career as well because I know we've had a little chat about one of your, your national champs wins but it'd be good because I know you've done the milk race and Commonwealth as well so it'd be good to have a bit of an overview of that. But I also want to spend a bit more time looking at the development of, of the products and the materials as well. So I know it's great when you come down here because you get a mix of, we can see some of Steve's old jerseys around here as well, as well as seeing the new kit, you know, and, and the new designs, whether it be for, you know, the, the cafe racer from, from the serious racers, I guess. As well, you know, if I reach down here, you know, one of these old jersey, I guess this was a, a GB jersey at some point, was it? Yeah, that was the uh, jersey actually rode the, um the world championships in the 1982 in Goodwood. Wow. You know, so uh, I've managed to keep keep quite a few of them. You know, it's an amazing, amazing condition. This yeah, year, but yeah, yeah. if I look at this for myself and, and the material, I can imagine it's not so good in the wet and, and maybe a little bit itchy in the in the heat as well, right? Yeah, the hell. Obviously, that would be classed as a winter jersey. That probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably true. So I said, guys, we are, we are going to be spending a bit more time looking at the technology and development and a bit on Steve's history as well. So. Tune in, subscribe, like, uh, give ProVision clothing a follow as well, and we'll see you on the next episode.